one of America's most prolific serial killers, has passed away. Law Crime Daily's Anjanette Levy spoke with a prosecutor who interviewed Little about two murders he committed in Ohio. Yeah, Brian, the FBI says Samuel Little actually murdered 93 people, mostly women, in 19 states from 1970 until 2005. Now, Little was actually arrested over the years for other crimes, but he was never caught for murder because he said he left town after killing a woman and then dumping her body. Little maintained his innocence until after his conviction in California, and a Texas Ranger interviewed him in prison. That Ranger, James Holland, got Little to admit to murdering 93 people, always by strangling. Holland got Little to also sketch his victims, many of whom were prostitutes, in the hope of identifying them. Little could recall a lot of details about the women he killed. She's a black male dressed up as a female. Okay, how tall is, is she? Very about five, seven, seven, five, six. She weighed about one third, five, okay. one, maybe one forty. And how old do you think she was? About, she was 19. Okay. And where was she from? No, I'm in Miami, down in Liberty City. Now, Little also confessed to killing two women from the Cincinnati, Ohio area. One of those women was identified. The other has never been found. Her remains are still out there somewhere, and police have yet to identify her. Prosecutors and police are working to do that. And I actually spoke with one of the prosecutors who interviewed Little in prison about what motivated him. This was his life, number one. He, uh, one thing about Samuel Little, too, I've tried a number of serial killers. Um, and most of them just like ooze evil. That's just the only way to describe them. And Sam Little was not like that. He was very, it sounds sunny, funny saying this about him, but he was personable. He was congenial. He was, he would kid around. He said, do you think it's wrong for a man to have sexual intercourse with a woman? I said, no. He goes, well, to me, putting my hands around a woman's throat and choking her, that was my form of sex. There's all kinds of different sex. To me, that was sex. And it's like, you know, dude, you're weird, but that's that's the way he looked at it. The rest of it meant nothing to him. You could have a supermodel in the back seat with him naked, and it would do nothing for him until he started choking her out. And then that's when he got around. A renowned forensic death investigator and Jacksonville State University professor Joseph Scott Morgan joins us. He's been following the case. And Joseph... There have been 50 of these confessions that have been verified by law enforcement that leaves about 43 homicides unsolved to date. You know, they say Little was very good with details, but there are some other details that are sketchy with him because of the sheer number and volume of these murders. So what chance do you see in the rest of these murders being solved? I gotta tell you, one of the fascinating things about Samuel Little's case is, is that we have DNA evidence from him and, you know, moving, you know, when I think back to things like, uh, you know, uh, Henry Lee Lucas and Otis Tool, who were a pair that traveled all over the country, had a lot of freedom, and they worked in tandem. They lied about a lot of the cases, but they did commit a lot of cases. We don't have, we don't have that much DNA, but for him, we have a source material for him, uh, particularly if he's engaging in fantasy activities with the body, and they were able to collect that at the time. This is a living person. Uh, now that we have this uh, attached to. So as the database increases and it improves, and I'm thinking uh, primarily through things like familial DNA, we might have a better chance of solving some of these open cases and confirming some of the things that he has said along the way. Let's think about what this ranger has, has accomplished. It's mind blowing. And I agree with the prosecutor. He's He's almost affable. When you listen to him talk, I, I listened to several minutes of, of the interviews, and uh, he goes into fine detail about clothing, hair color. He, he kept using a term, which I found fascinating, when he was talking about the tone of skin. He said, yeah, that girl was honey color. And he used that term over and over again, and it's, it's striking because a lot of these guys have these very vivid fantasy lives in their mind. And, He's living this over and over, even cases that happened all the way back in the early 70s. It's still happening. It was still happening in real time as he was talking to this ranger.
Yeah, and we've definitely seen that in this case, and uh, hopefully there will be some justice provided to the victims so. and their families. Joseph Scott Morgan, thanks again so much for talking with us uh, with us about this. Brian, we're going to send it back to you. Thanks, Angela, as well as Joseph Scott Morgan. Coming up on Law and Crime.